Well, hello. It's playing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's good. Is it okay? Very good. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, y'all. It's a new day. It's beautiful um, out today for sure. We are out in the rice fields again. Yeah. Uh, I never know how to start. So yeah, it's, it's good. I'm like, we're just we love y'all. Hey, again. Uh, so we've both been thinking about something that we feel is pretty important. And last night I was, uh, I got home, at, I left my sister's house and ended up at home writing. I, I wrote for probably four hours last night, just going over things that were coming into my mind. And one of the things that uh, started, I started thinking a lot about was honesty and how difficult it is to just, like, there's these things that we want to hold on to for whatever reason. Maybe it's something that we've held on to our entire lives. But I just had the thought come to my mind. It's in the beginning parts of the AA book. They call it the big book. We do. Um, and it's really, really powerful. I'm going to read it real quick. It's not very long. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to this simple program. Usually men and women who are constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves. There are such unfortunates. And I was telling Kelly, I, I read this one time in group and I just started crying. Constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves. Just completely mentally ill. They are not at fault. That gave me some hope. They seem to have been born that way. They are naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. Their chances are less than average. There are those too who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. And last night I got all into how many people in this world are taking medications because they are suffering from mental illness and from somebody that has suffered with mental illness and that has chosen to live the 12 steps uh, there's only one way to do it and that is to be completely honest to let go of the things that that we've internalized since we were little kids and so I've been talking a lot of about the way that that the world kind of in today's world I can't imagine a kid that has not seen uh, pornography in some kind of some kind of way that was the beginning of my lies and I mean I was probably 10 years old and I really didn't know what was going on um, I just know that I came across a Playboy on a railroad track and saw it and didn't know what I was feeling, but I felt something. And immediately I just, I felt like it was something I shouldn't be feeling for whatever reason. Things weren't explained to me or whatever. I don't have any excuses, but I didn't know what I, what was going on. And before you know it, internet came into our house and, you know, the, it's a, it's a plague there. The world is really sick with pornography. And I think that it's a, that's a whole different topic. That's my opinion. Uh, I think that it keeps people really sick. It's a very secretive world. Um, it's dark. I mean, how do you get viruses on your computer? That's the best way to do it. But it brought me back to to a time that I haven't really thought about, you know, just a time where things started getting suppressed and there was nobody that could reach me from the time I was probably 12 years old. You just, if you asked me, I was in full blown denial. Denial had taken over my life. I would not accept that, that I was, this was the beginning of mental illness it was me starting to lie about things that could have, I could have gotten help. You know, but I refused to admit that there was something wrong in my life. And it took me down a path that I've 
fought with mental illness now for probably 30 years. I didn't know that I was mentally ill. You know, I, I didn't know until probably 20 years ago that I had mental, that I suffered from mental illness. And I didn't really accept it until probably 10 years ago. And that's when I started getting medicated, depression medication, um, different prescriptions and whatever and it all went downhill from there and it takes me back to just honesty I really believe that one the biggest problem and AA is 100% the 12 step program just solidifies that is we are constitutionally incapable of being honest with ourselves and you know there's, there's only one way to break free of mental illness, and that is to be 100% honest in our lives. And it's hard. I mean, it really is for somebody that is sick and mentally ill and unwilling to admit the failure or admit... Um, I've been sick my whole life. I've suffered with mental illness since I was a child, you know, um, <clears throat> talking about keeping secrets whenever, you know, being sexually molested as a child, that's like such a huge, huge secret that, you know, that I've kept. And then talking about um, pornography, you know, the first time I saw pornography, I was probably around six you know, and then I'd seen it many times after that, you know, other people just bring it to me or, or seeing it online or whatever. And that just adds, it adds shame and it adds guilt, just layer on layer. I know that when I was in high school, I mean, you don't really know that you're mentally ill or that you have something wrong with your mind, but I can remember in high school, I, I went through a really hard time and you know, we want to control, <laughs> you know, it's like our minds, we, we, we don't want to be sick. We know something's wrong, but we don't understand it. And so at that time in high school, I started to try to control my feelings and everything through like food. Um, I started to not eat. I would control how much I ate. And I can remember I got to a point where I was like 89 pounds. <clears throat> I was passing out at school, passing out at church. I ended up in the hospital malnourished. I can remember one day I I was like so fanatical about like how much I would eat. I can remember I, I felt like I needed to eat, but I didn't want to eat. And so I got just one saltine cracker and I just like nibbled on a little cracker. And then I felt bad that I was eating a cracker, you know. It, and it's really crazy the way that the mind wants to just put, push down pain. We do such crazy things to not feel what we need to feel. And it's that being incapable or just not wanting to be honest with, with other people about what's going on with ourselves. And it's just the shame. It's the fear. It's the guilt. It's all those things that we're just afraid that if someone finds out, then they're going to think less of us or they're going to think bad of us or I don't know, you know, whatever. That's so true. I'm, And the part that's so important for people to realize is that most of these behaviors begin before our brains even developed. You know, I mean, we don't even know how to rationalize that or to comprehend abstract concepts. I mean, the brain just doesn't work that way. The brain is when you're really young, you don't even get sarcasm and stuff. I mean, things are we think our kids, it's like, OK, I told you to do that three times. I've been told to do things thousands of times in my life and I'm still working on it, but I'm going to be impatient with a six year old or a seven year old because they don't get it the third time I tell them to do something. The brain just is not, it hasn't formed. And before the brain's even able to form, I'm already stuck in a cycle that I don't even comprehend that it's going on. Denial is a very powerful thing. Like, I mean, to the point where the brain completely shuts it out. If you've experienced it, when I had some memories come back to my mind, that I didn't even know happened in my life. It's like, how is that possible? You know, how is it possible that my brain has completely shut this stuff off? I, uh, 
it's because my brain was way more developed than my psyche or whatever. I mean, I, my brain knew what it needed to do to keep me from probably killing myself at a very young age. And I know some people that did, you know. And I understand, like, I really, truly understand the depths that a person can get to to want to take their life. I've been in such deep, I mean, deep depressions where I could not get out of bed for weeks at a time. And I mean, and it really, it, it puts you in a place where you just would much rather just not be not here. Feel anymore. Yeah. You just, and, and it's really, it, it boils down to what you read. It boils down to honesty. How, you know, can we be honest with ourselves? And that has always been one of the hardest things for me is just being honest with myself because I've always been afraid of hurting other people. And so I've always held back with myself. I don't want to hurt you. So I don't want to say something that could possibly hurt you, even though it's going to heal me and make me better. Yeah. yeah. And I see that in my uh, precious little seven-year-old, you know, and even <laughs> even my 11-year-old. It's like they they will rather lie about something than to just accept that they made a mistake. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to tell because you're going to get mad or whatever. And I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of getting mad and lashing out and acting like a child because my brain really is developing. I mean, I, I am, I'm, it's like I'm growing up in my forties, but I had that conversation with my seven year old Saturday and it's like, listen, you know, just Facing the truth is the best way to do anything in life. Uh, don't worry about how somebody else is going to react because telling the truth really disarms people, you know? Yeah. All of a sudden you say, yeah, I did that. And they're like, okay, well, don't do it anymore. You know, I'm, and I'm discussing this with a seven-year-old, but I really think she was, she was grasping it. And I had, it's not that I wasn't taught. It's that so many things just if you grew up in the 80s i mean you get it you know our parents and the generations before that just did not have a concept of mental illness of addictions um it's such a i mean you know it's such a new thing relatively new in the world uh that yeah, talking about it being honest and yeah the whole with it. 12 step program the process of repentance and change has been around forever but really grasping like what's going on mentally with me why is this happening it's because you are constitutionally incapable of being honest with yourself and if you don't get honest with yourself and really work on a personal inventory like from the beginning you know uh i will stay sick i will stay stuck in a place I hate how my voice sounds. I've listened to some of these things. <laughs> I will though. Um, I hear myself now like listening to myself and it's like, that's so annoying how I talk. But that's, so that's just me. I, I know. I try my I best think not to myself, watch but these not you. things. <laughs> I really do. I don't. I, but um, honesty is, I love it. Like I do. I am coming to. I truly am. I am. It's, it's so a process. It, it is really such is a, like... it's not a one day you're honest and all of a sudden <laughs> everything's changed. It, I realized that it's been 30 years, 35 years that I really can remember back to when I started just saying no, I never did it. You know, no, that never happened. And deep inside the way that I dealt with it is I said, okay, well, I'm just not going to do it anymore. I just won't talk about it. I'll just push it down. And it's, it just got it's that stuck. stuff that we push down that we push down. And, and that is what makes us mentally ill. That's what makes us so sick is all that stuff that we have shoved down in our gut, you know, and it, and it makes us physically sick. It really does. It causes so many physical issues. Tons of anxiety, tons of shame. I'm a bad person. And it's just not true. It's yeah. something that mentally ill people, people that are prescribed to all these things for a number of disorders, it all, we're all the same in this regard. And 
I really believe that the 12 step program is something that God gave the world to heal people that are sick. And the one thing that we all have in common is an inability to be honest. And it seems, it says, it seems that we were born that way. We weren't born that way. But out of fear and out of just whatever reason, our brains take over when they're not even developed and we create this thing called denial. Then we become, we just become liars. I mean, we do. We will lie about anything. I know I would just to keep it hid, to protect my secrets, to protect my addictions, because I didn't want to let go of them, you know? And today I, I feel, I, I can feel the progress, you know? Um, did it take too long? It took too long. It did. It just took too long for a lot of people, and I get that. I really do. I, I, I feel for. Uh, it. Why did it take so long? I don't know. You know. I think I can, everything's in God's time. I it mean, is in it's God's just, time. Everything happens. And I do perfectly. know that there are so many people that I've lost, so many people that have died, and taken their secrets to the grave taken their lies to the grave when everybody really knows i mean it's it's like i don't i i convinced myself that i had all these secrets but give me a break you know uh but i i i do know that we can heal and we don't have to be stuck on all this big pharma stuff all these things that they tell us is wrong with us the problem is being honest with myself Mm -hmm. to thine own self be true is also something that I love I will say for pharmacy because pharmaceuticals and stuff they have they have helped me at times whenever I was so low that there was no light like I could not feel it I could not see it I could not you know and and there is something about the chemicals there I don't understand all of it I just know that it has lifted me up out of pits of despair Um, And so I have always been grateful for it, but I've also recognized that it completely blocks me from being fully who I am. You know, it blocks me from being able to just enjoy this life. Yeah. So it's like there's pros and there are cons. Like, I don't want to say don't ever take pharmaceuticals because it saves people's lives at times, you know, whenever they are not capable of being honest yet. You know, it's all a process. It's all progress. Yeah, I... I would also say that it's probably they have probably saved my life at certain points in my life where I was unable to get out of bed, you know. Um, but at the same time, the I will say that it ha- it kept me sick, right? You know, and I can I can explain how it kept me sick. I mean, I understand the mm-hmm. actual physiological what's going on with my body. You know, it's. It's amazing how we can get so trapped and feel like there's no hope. And I know that if I can be honest with myself and forget what anybody cares about me and just say, okay, all I can do is my best today. And does that mean that I'm going to be perfect? No, but it does mean that I can think about my day at the end of the day and say, where did I go wrong? And I can make those corrections in my life tomorrow. Uh, Yes pharmaceuticals have their role in recovery because there is a point where we where a person that's mentally ill gets where there really is no recovery until there's fixing the issue with what's going on in here where are my chemicals where are the things that my brain gives me that tells me it's okay you know yeah i've completely depleted that stuff yeah because of the abuse that i've put on my body but today i don't i don't have that i uh my brain's working and I really believe that it has to do with, I, I think my brain will give me everything that I need as long as I'm being honest with it. Talking about my brain in a second person, whatever, third person, however, but it, that's, that's the relationship that I've had with my brain. But you know, it's a, uh, it's a matter of getting to know myself before I can really let anybody get to know me so if I'm going to be true to myself it's like who am I and I have to be honest with myself like to me pornography is a sickness it's an illness 
Does that mean that any, everybody out there feels the same way? No. But to me, it was a thing of shame and guilt and stuff that I tucked away. That's just not necessary because it's not our fault. I mean, it really isn't. That stuff attacks us at an age before we can even comprehend what's going on. So are you to blame for it? No. I really don't believe that we are. I believe that the world is set up in a way to make us sick, to make us rely on prescriptions. But when we become aware of it, you know, it is now our responsibility to do something different about it. We can't just say, oh, well, you know, I started this as a kid and now I can't stop. I'm a victim. Anybody can stop anything. Yeah, we're not victims. Maybe not overnight, but we can all make progress to stop the, the bad habits and the things that we get sucked into you know you're talking about like the brain and and how you just weren't well and you know it's the same with drug addiction and depression I mean it just takes our minds it takes us to places where we just aren't well and we make choices about the foods that we eat the things that we do to our bodies just the sleep that we get you know we just we don't take care of ourselves and we just make it even worse yeah for sure uh, public confession, you know, I, I always had this, like, I was also, I also had an eating disorder. I mean, how many guys out there have them? I don't know. Dysmorphia, body dysmorphia or whatever. You know, somebody told me my legs were too skinny when I was 14 and I'm 45 dealing with that. That's just sick thinking. It really is like, what do other people think about me is so important, but I was always so proud about I'm all natural, you know, I I eat this certain way and I don't use enhancing steroids and stuff, but I did, you know, I mean, I did do it after, after a lot of years of being all natural, um, you know, in my 30s somewhere in there I, I used um, anabolic steroids and I was unwilling to admit that my brother straight up asked me a few months ago if I was on steroids and I would straight up deny it to the day I died and that's just sick like why can't I just be at peace with the fact that I used some well because I did not feel that it was right and I was in conflict with myself it had nothing to do with anybody else I was not okay with me mm-hmm. because I know it's unhealthy and where did I go? Well, immediately I lied about it. Why? Because I've been doing that since I was 10 years old. You know, I've, I've, it's where I go. It's where that addict mind wants to take me. But I refuse to let it keep me there anymore. And I'll do it straight publicly. I'm, I'm sorry if you don't agree with the way that I do it. But it just came to my mind right now and it came out. You know, that is something that will keep me sick. And I don't want to be sick anymore. Honesty is the only way that we can heal from mental illness and addictions in life. And if I want to keep a secret, it's going to keep me sick. And it's going to keep me from being the best person I can be today. You know, is this the appropriate way to confess to my brother that I lied to him? Probably not. Probably not. But it came out right here, so... I'll talk to you there later you about it, you know? <laughs> I mean, we I are mean, unfiltered. You, do you really think he didn't know, though? Oh, I know he knew. I, I know I mean, he knew. He so knew I was like... lying to him from the very first time it came out of my mouth. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I was the one in denial. I was the right. one that didn't want to accept it. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, obvious. we all knew. Yeah. You were the only one that didn't. <laughs> well, no, even the judge knew. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, it's... Yeah. It, the way that our brain can take over our life because it's been doing it since before it was even developed is something that you can be so free of this, of, of mental illness. You can be so free of addictions, but it takes being rigorous and complete completely honest and that's hard it it is very hard hard. and that's why it's not a perfection thing it's about progress one day at a time you hear it all the time from people in recovery and i love the world today because recovery it did begin as an anonymous thing because of the fear of how many people would immediately like come rush this and try and invest in it and do different things that wasn't the purpose the purpose was to share the message 
and all I know is what's working for me and I have that same desire is this anonymous by no means I don't care to be anonymous you know it's not about me but it's saving my life to talk about the things that we talk about with our friends which in today's world there y'all are if you're watching this mm -hmm. it's all about being honest and I'm not perfect at it and I'll probably deal with it for the rest of my life because it started at such a young age but what can we do when we do lie think about it confess it change our behaviors and tr do our best it's all about doing your best so that takes you back to the four agreements if you haven't read the four agreements it's great mm -hmm. I was talking with my oldest daughter and she said that that's the one it's so important just to realize that it it doesn't matter you know it doesn't matter where you are today it just matters where you're going and that you do your best to just tell the truth it sucks sometimes the fear of it is what sucks mm -hmm. you know you, leading up to it yeah leading up to it once it's done it's like oh ah, yeah it really is so oh, freeing i can breathe <laughs> i don't have this 50 pound chest on weight on my chest keeping me down that i call anxiety mm -hmm. you know I can, t I can breathe so good right now. It's like something's just been lifted. And it's such a stupid little thing that everybody knew. But I was in denial. Mm -hmm. We don't have to live that way. It will keep us sick. Mm -hmm. And today I choose recovery. Today I choose mental clarity. And I don't want to be mentally ill. I've had that on me for so long. And I'm just not. You mm -hmm. know, I don't have to be that. Nobody has to be that, but you do have to be honest if you want recovery and if you want mental clarity and mental health. Mental health, anywhere you go for mental health, if you are mentally ill, they're going to set you on the path of being honest. That is the beginning of mental health. No matter where you go, no matter what hospital or institution that you're locked up in, no matter what, that is the beginning of recovery and mental health is honesty. Mm -hmm. Talking about it, seeing a good therapist. I mean, some of the things that, so we had wanted to talk about that, you know, things that we do to replace all those holes that we've created from, you know, from depression and, and drugs. Um, some of the things that I've done is I've seeked out counseling, seeked out therapy with counselors that that help me with behavioral. Like I like the behavioral therapist because they help you to recognize your behaviors and teach you ways to change those behaviors. Because we get so stuck, you know, we're stuck from yeah. childhood in thinking certain ways and in certain patterns and, and things that we do. And so to have somebody in front of you, you know, be able to recognize these things that you're doing and to give you different um, perspectives yeah and insight and on challenges why. on ways to, to to change um that has helped me is having really great therapists there are some very intelligent people in this world that understand how the brain works that you know yeah it costs some money the insurance might cover it or whatever but it really is the this is the last thing i'm going to say my therapist that i was seeing he told me that the only way that I would ever get completely healthy is if I shared my story with the world. He told me that probably five years ago. And I just kind of blew it off. And, you know, at that time in my life, he probably saved my life. And I hadn't thought about it until we started doing this. I mean, I was told this a long time ago. I have to share my story. I'm no different than any other addict and mentally ill person out there. There's nothing special about me, but I am willing to open myself up to the world. I want to be healthy. I want my brain to work right. I want my chemicals to flow through me. And if I hold these lies, this, those sick behaviors, if I keep that to myself, I'm just not going to get healthy. So I'm, I'm very grateful for people out there that have that knowledge and can see people and um, mm -hmm. you know this wasn't a desire that I just came up with you know it's it's something that I've been told to do 
that it was the only way. And I don't know if that's the truth, but I feel like God felt like it was something that I needed to do too, because it came to us and it's, it's beautiful. I love being able to breathe, you know, and yeah, honesty is a beautiful thing and, uh, it's progress. It's about progress. So today I choose to progress and I just did a little bit. Thank you if you watched us. Mm -hmm. It is another beautiful day and I really do love y'all. And I love children. Like I want them to not go through what we went through. I want my children to understand the whys. You know, why am I doing this? Why is this happening to me? It's because you're being a little liar. <laughs> right. Just be honest, you know. And that is something that... Don't be afraid to be honest. No matter we're what. We're so afraid to be honest. Especially when we're these tiny little people yeah. and we have these giants that are hovering over us, pointing a finger in our face, scared that I'm going to get spanked or whatever. I mean, it's it's so just... It's just sick. And I don't want my children and I don't want the youth in our area to grow up with the same sicknesses that we had I've lost so many people due to mental illness and addictions, mm -hmm. and I, I refuse to, to just sit back and let it continue to happen. And I know I'm going to lose more people due to it, but if I can just reach out to one person, just get honest. Even you know, it's so healthy. Mm -hmm. I love y'all. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. If you did, we went pretty long, but it went really fast for me. I hope it did for you too. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Bye, y'all.